Hey guys, it's Kathy. I'm doing something a little different today. Um, with my background, I'm going to do a, a Dutch pour over this circle in the middle. But instead of painting it gold ahead of time or filling in gold afterwards, uh, I'm going to be using this beautiful foil. Let's see if I can get this off of here. It's called Melody Marble. Can you see how beautiful that is? That's going to be a little circle here. Um, let me carefully put that back. I get this from, what is it, Artistic Painting Studio, and I got the idea from Tammy Anderson. I will list her link on how she does the foils below in the description box. But for now, what I'm going to do is add that foil. What I will need first is this uh, embellishment foil adhesive that I also get at the, um, <laughs> the Artistic Painting Studio. Uh, they have tons of stuff there. You can get bears to do all kinds of different art. Uh, this plan is to put this down. Uh, I will wait one hour after I put the, oops, the adhesive down, and then I will put this on over it. Um, and then when I do the Dutch pour over, I'm going to use the translucent mix first, which is mostly Floetrol and water and a little bit of Liquitex pouring medium. And then I will pour my Dutch pour lines as usual and blow it out. So that is the plan. So what I've done <clears throat> is I've taken a, a chalk pin. Let me grab one for you real quick here. here we go. These are the chalk markers. You can order these. I don't I think I got, you could get them in from any art store or uh, maybe on Amazon. I can't remember where I got these, but if I find out, I'll, I'll link them below. Anyway, they're chalk markers. They come in a different size. I use the little one. These other ones come, it's a little thicker. The, the beauty of these chalk markers is they come right off uh, with a little bit of water and your finger or a paper towel or whatever you have handy. So it's just a good thing to put down first and then you can paint over or do whatever. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is um, I'm going to cut out a circle from this. <laughs> it's just kind of a sturdy paper. You can get the same thing uh, that covers the corners of your brand new canvases. This is for the, the piddle pads. And I'm going to cut out a circle I'm going to fold it and cut out the circle so when I put the adhesive down with this brush, well actually I think I'm going to use a sponge brush because they're pretty cheap and if I screw it up and ruin it with the uh, adhesive, um, it's not a big loss. Uh, brushes are more expensive. So I'm going to do that with it and just have that little bit of a frame around it so I don't muck it up too badly with the adhesive. So, all right, so let me get started on cutting my little circle out and then I'll show you how this is done. Okay, so I've taped this down. You can see there's little gaps I did tape underneath in certain spots. I think I'll just hold down with my finger to do that. So, I'm just going to take this adhesive. Now this takes an hour or so to dry. So you're going to apply this, wait an hour, you can wait two hours. So while it's drying, you can clean up your art room or start another painting or something. Um, just want to make sure I get past those corners first. <laughs> Yeah, I want to 
I do more on the inside. I'd like to try to cover all of this circle. I hope this will do the trick. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, that's it. Now you don't have to, um, depending on what you're doing. For this, I want to try to get the entire piece to hold on. I think I've covered all the edges. I'm a little concerned that I can see little brush strokes, but hopefully that won't matter. So, um, you might want to do if what well, another abstract art just. Uh, like a dry brush technique with the adhesive and then when you add your foil on it it'll just be bits and pieces which can make you know kind of a stripey really cool effect too for this i want a a solid um like i said i hope <laughs> i hope this will be solid enough but that's it i'm going to clean my little sponge brush off you can get these uh in any hardware store or in the painting department. They're not, ex in, they're not expensive and they come in different sizes. I use them a lot uh, for varnishing and doing different things with my art. So I will be back um, an hour or so for me and a couple of seconds for you. And then we'll um, adhere this beautiful foil to it. All right. Let's see in a second. Okay, this has been on here a little over an hour, and I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off of here. goop on there. Okay, the trick to this is making sure that the, the top part that you want to show is on the top, not on the bottom. So I'm going to put that right here. Now whatever's left uh, you can reuse for some other project. Um, you can use to flatten this out. This, uh, what do you call these things? I'm drawing a blank on this. You want to have good pressure, but you don't want to have enough where you're going to rip the foil. It's the wedge. Uh, there's also one of these things. This is by Lolly Viffy just love life or one of these you can get in the paint store i think that's probably just as good i don't know any of those things and you're going to gently but firmly <laughs> i can see the the paintbrush markings from there going to use my finger. I'm going to have to use this canvas is giving a little bit, you see, so I just have to spray the back of it with water and that will tighten it up like a drum again.
Well, it did show the brush, the brush strokes. I say brush stroke like it's swimming around, which is not what I had in mind. So maybe I had a little too much glue on there. What I can do, I think I can go over it again with the glue and with this, and I think it will still look nice. Oh, that's just great to have that there. That's not what I want. <laughs> A little bit of the glue on there, but I can get rid of that. Anyway, it's pretty, and you can see how, how nice that is. But where I have the little brush strokes, uh, it did not pick up the color. So I'm going to go over this again and see what we can do. Uh, I wonder if there's a way that's smoother to add this on. But this is my first attempt. We'll keep going. I'll see you in a bit. Hi okay, guys, I'm back. I finally have this circle finished with the beautiful holographic foil. Um, I used a gold pin to do the gold around here, a gold paint pin. Um, I wasn't, and I'm still not that happy with having brush strokes inside of the foil. Uh, those brush strokes picked up the foil, but part of it didn't. Uh, the only way to get that is to have the, the adhesive completely flat with no brush strokes, and I don't know how to do that. Um, maybe if you poured it with something around it and, and let it set, maybe that's the way. Um, I have to explore that. But meanwhile, I did add a little bit of prism pour pigments onto the areas in here that... Uh, were blank from the brush brush strokes. Uh, anyway, you can still see them, but I think it's pretty, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour, do a dust pour over it. The colors today are Amsterdam Prussian Phthalo Blue. It's very dark, but it's a bit translucent or transparent. The next is Prism Pour. Let's see if I can pronounce this. Chrysocol Chrysocola. It's a pretty deep teal color. And then there's Prism Pour Pretty Petunia. It's gorgeous, electric, purpley blue. Just beautiful. The next is Amsterdam's Turquoise Blue. The next is Deco Art 24 Karat Gold. And the next is a combination of Artist Loft and Amsterdam White Titanium. This is my funky little pouring spout. I should have put them on all of these, but um, there we go. Um, okay, this is my, it's a new blow dryer here. I don't even know what that says, but I can find it and link that below. This is my first time using it. It has high and low setting and a cool setting, which is very important. Um, you just want a cool setting to blow it out. You don't want to bake the paint as you're blowing it out. That would not work too well. All right, so let's go ahead and try to do this. Uh, I think I want to pour this where it, it kind of cuts a little bit over the center and over. And this is still a little bit tacky, which is normal. Um, oh, I don't want to do that. Silly me. I'm going to do the Dutch pour, but first I'm going to cover it with a uh, translucent mix, which is mostly Floetrol, a little bit of GAC 800, and also a very tiny bit of Liquitex pouring medium. So let's get this done.
Okay. I kind of made a mess there, but it looks like a kind of a cool little cloud effect over. So don't mind it. I had hoped to keep some of that center showing underneath, but I covered it. So which tells me I used too much paint and I should have used finer lines. And uh, probably should have used a blow dryer that I'm more accustomed to than a brand new one. So right here, I'm just trying to uh, soak up some of this little bit of white paint that dripped here. Interesting looking. I like these little, whatever these are, coming off into the translucent. I think this is going to look really pretty, even though I hadn't intended that. I don't really like this little blob coming out here. This is uh, making some, I think from all the Floetrol in the, the uh, translucent mix, it's making these beautiful cells with the white all over here and through the blue. That's very cool. isn't working too well. It works a little bit, I guess. All right. So I'm just going to do a little tweaking here and there. Just I like want to um, take that line and incorporate it the rest of the movement here. I love that these little lines came out all by themselves. So I think we'll just continue on with that since that's what it's doing. It has a little bleeding effect here with the prism pore colors, which I think is really pretty. Maybe I can incorporate this out a little bit to cover up some of these little, little, little droplets here. I don't know, maybe they're kind of cute. And I can actually put some of the base coat back over those once it dries. This is not real great, but I think since it's on top of that very cool center, it's not going to be that noticeable. I'm still going to make some little lines in there as if I'd intended to do that. I think this is just way cool. Like a little cloud. And extend these out a little bit too.
looks pretty good. You don't know what other little lines need to be tweaked. I like kind of the round softness of this one. We have the lines here. This kind of looks like it's raining over here. Let me go ahead and torch this in case we have any air bubbles. Bring you down for the wet results a close-up uh, you still can't see you won't be able to see the true aspect of this until it is dry and then you can see through to the center and you can already see where it's going to be see-through and translucent in certain areas very cool all right i'll be so right here back are the wet results my apologies for the shadow and for the glare so you can definitely see a little bit of that, but it just looks like you have glue over it. There's a gold starting to shimmer through everything. And these very cool cells, these are just from uh, reacting with the Floetrol translucent base. So pretty how that blended and I love the prism pour colors. They're so bright and beautiful. I'm not sure how that area of uh, cell activity is going to dry. Looks like it's going to be translucent with the white cells over it. But we shall see. I think I'm going to want to do more of these. I just love this idea. I've done a couple others with translucent which you may or may not have seen yet. Uh, I do these videos weeks in advance. But it's a whole different style here. Some more cells. Okay. Well, that was fun. I will bring you back in a moment with the dry results. Okay, I want to show you the failed drying of my experiment here. Um, as you can see, uh, the colors bled into the translucent here. I've actually taken the base coat color I had and I'm starting to paint over this bled all the way down here. It took out that nice lacing that was there. Here you can see how it bled here. And the other odd thing as I'm painting this, I can see, do you see that yellowing? The translucent yellowed, uh, maybe from picking up the colors that were in this. I don't know, but it really sucks. <laughs> um, this, I tried a little corner here with my finger of varnish just to see if that would shine up uh, with varnish before I started to do any more fix-it work, and it did. So that's going to be very pretty. And um, I also had too much paint. You see how everything is cracked here. All of that I'm going to hand brush and uh, fix it because I love the idea, but I'm going to have to paint all over this background to get rid of that yellowing. So uh, I would say this is a failed experiment. Um, I do still like the basic shape. I like the foil in there. Um, I wanted you guys to see this, to see what a fail can look like. But also, I'm hoping after I fix it up, it will still look beautiful. And I hope to come back and show you the finished product. But it's going to take a lot of work. All right. Thanks for putting up with me with this experiment. I appreciate it. Okay, See you soon. Here, this is all dry and varnished. I think it looks beautiful, especially considering all the problems I had with it and all the 
hand painting I had to do. It's pretty cool. The um, centerpiece was most interesting. The foil did not come out as shiny as it would if I had not put the translucent floral floor trough mix over it. So a lesson learned if I want to use the foil that goes on after the painting. Uh, there's all that. So much of this is hand painted. I'm trying to get back what I lost in the drying process. But I love the movement of it, especially through here. And this little bit that the bled actually looks pretty cool. Looks like a little wind-blown cloud. Anyway, so there you have it. Thanks so much for joining me, especially on this epic fail that turned out pretty good considering. So until next time, hey, take care, be well and happy, and I will see you then. Bye-bye.